a very good evening uh, to all dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So last week uh, we studied about, uh, you see, tongues. Uh, uh, so we saw that uh, what is the meaning of tongues? Uh, it's not an unknown language and we are clearly seen from the scriptures that it is a understandable language where uh, others can really and clearly understand. And uh, Apostle Paul, while speaking uh, about tongues, he says, uh, I would rather speak uh, in understandable language, five words, than speaking uh, unknown language, uh, uh, so that uh, nobody can understand. Uh, therefore, he sets a rule that uh, if somebody has to speak at tongues in the church, it has to be maximum two or three, not more than that one. And moreover, somebody else should interpret uh, what they're speaking. So, hence we see that what they are speaking today in the churches is not the scriptural one. It's a purely not the work of the Holy Spirit. So, next uh, we are going to see today about uh, miracles. Uh, what does the Bible say about miracles? Uh, because today we see a lot of charismatic movement uh, happening here and there in a lot of places where the blind uh, see, the deaf hear uh, and uh, the lame walking. And all the uh, many diseased people are healed. So, is it uh, the same way what Jesus did? You see, there are a lot of miracles happening, but in those uh, miracles, if you observe and clearly see, there is not uh, a particular person who is totally 100% healed without his disease. We see that uh, the persons who are uh, healed, you see, those persons who are deaf, they can hear not completely 100%, but uh, partially. And those uh, who are uh, you see, blind, they can uh, see only uh, 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 partially, but uh, not 100% and the lame also, they walk, but they don't walk as uh, during the days of Jesus. So they walk, you see. Let us see what actually Jesus did. How was the miracles that Jesus did? So let us read John 9, chapter verse 1, 6 and 7. Can somebody read? Joel, brother, can you read? John 9, chapter verse 1, then 6 and 7. John? 9, chapter, verses 1, and later on, 6 and 7. Okay. Uh, and and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Okay, and he said, go wash in the pool of you know, Shalom, which is my interpretation uh, sent. I, and he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Here you see, Jesus uh, healed a blind person. Now, who was a blind, blind person? If you see, he was a blind person from birth. You see, that means what? Uh, he did not have eyes at all. You see, he simply had the eye sockets there, but there was no eye at all. And later, what did Jesus do? Jesus took the clay, you see, and uh, mixed it with his uh, spittle. And uh, you see, he completely covered uh, his eyes. Uh, you see, the one who were born blind, uh, usually they don't have these eye sockets. The eye sockets are empty. They don't have eyes at all. What did Jesus do? Put the clay inside, uh, you see, and uh, told him to go and wash in the pool of Shalom. As soon as he washed, you know what happened? Immediately, the eyes began to grow before everybody. And he came seeing, this is the miracle that Jesus did. Healing the born blind. Now, today, are such miracles happening? Are the born blind healed? You see? Next, see one more miracle what Jesus did in Matthew 12, chapter verse 10 and 13. Munna sister, can you read? And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal 
on the Sabbath days that they might excuse him. Thirteen, then said he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. See, here we see a man with a withered hand. Withered hand means what? It did not have the hand completely at large. See, those people will be having the hand only till here. The fingers will be here. You see, you can see in that, that photo is also not so clear. Okay? That is the withered hand. You see, and Jesus, as soon as he prayed, what does the scripture say? He says, you see, he told to stretch forth uh, your hand. And as he stretched forth, what happened? Uh, that hand began to grow you know, similarly as the other hand. That's what his case, the scripture says. And he stretched forth and it was restored whole like as the other. So one was short, other was lengthy. Now as soon as Jesus prayed in front of everybody, you see, the hand began to grow. Now, does this type of miracles happen today? One more miracle what Jesus did in Luke 13 chapter 11 to 13. Uh, who can read? Romans sister Amber, brother, are you comfortable reading? Is it possible for you to read? You can read. Or else we'll tell somebody to read. All right, brother. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of in uh, firmity uh, 18 years 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, uh, he called her to him and said unto her, Women, thou art loosed from thine infer infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Yeah. Here, if you see um, a woman with a hatchback, she was in such a condition for 18 years, it seems. She could not stand erectly at all. But as soon as Jesus prayed, what happened? Immediately on the spot, she began to stand completely. But today, you see, Huh? When the miracles happen, the people tell that, oh, okay, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, a she will stand partially, but uh, they won't be healed 100%. They will, they will say, okay, I'm going, okay, okay. But again, if you see and go and meet them, that uh, same problem will be there. Uh, they will be improved a little bit, uh, not 100% as it was during the days of Jesus. And one more miracle, we all know, we are quite familiar with this one. A woman had a blood flow, you see, continuously for how many years? Sir? 12 years. Sir. You see, let us read that one. What happened? Matthew 9 chapter verses 20 to 22. <clears throat> Matthew 9 chapter verses 20 to 22. Uh, Roshni sister. Roshni sister, come on brother. Can you read? Is it possible for you to read? Yes, brother. Thank you, sir. Matthew 9, chapter 22-22. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, twelve years, came behind him and touched, uh, touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, "Daughter, be be of uh, be of good com comfort. The faith hath made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from the hours." Ah, you see, the woman was having an issue of blood for twelve years. She only touched the, you see, the the hem of the Jesus cloth. What happened? Immediately on the spot. She was healed and she could feel it. You see? And the woman was made whole from that very hour. You see? Now do we find such miracles happening on the spot? You see? 100% healed? Huh? Uh -huh. We need to think. One more incident where the 
ten lepers came in search for Jesus. They cried, Lord, have mercy. O son of David, have mercy on us. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, go and show to the, you see, the high priest. And as they were going, what happened? Their leprosy was totally healed. Let us read Luke 17, chapter 12 to 14. Gopal, brother, can you read? Luke 17, chapter 12 to 14, brother. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, uh, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Okay. When were they healed? On the spot, you see, they left Jesus and they were just moving. What happened? On the spot, as they went, they were cleansed means what? As they were walking, you see, they could see the leprosy disappearing. <clears throat> you see, leprosy, if it comes, means what happens? The body totally gets deformed. The nose will be eaten. You see, the ears will be eaten. It won't be, you see, as normal. Your fingers will be so totally like this one. But as soon as Jesus uh, prayed and he told them to go to the show and I preached, on the way, what happened? You see, the fingers that were withered, you see, that were eaten up by leprosy, it began to grow. You see, the skin began to get fresh. Dear brethren, these things happened before everybody on the spot there itself. You see, and uh, we all know the incident about Malchus. You see, he was the one who came to arrest Jesus and Peter took the sword and smote him. So what happened immediately? You see, his ears was chopped off. You see, and what did Jesus do? Jesus took that ear and immediately on the spot, you see, you, he healed and uh, stick that ear back to Malchus. Imagine which surgeon in the world can do such an operation on the spot without any anesthesia, without any medicines, you see, and cure such a way in seconds. Dear brethren, this is the miracle that Jesus did. You see, can we see such miracles happening today? No. You see, immediately if you take any person who is met with accident to the, you see, Huh? An evangelist or a, you see, a Pentecost church, uh, immediately they will tell, oh, rush him, rush him to the hospital. If the same thing would have happened in Jesus' days, Jesus would have healed on the spot. Uh, this is the miracle that Jesus did, dear brother. Just imagine, no stitches, no gum, nothing. On the spot, everything. Okay. Malchus did not feel any pain at all. Uh -huh. This is the miracle. And how did uh, Jesus... Uh, huh? Heal the dumb, you see, and the deaf, you see, he put his finger in his mouth. What happened? The deaf began to speak. How did they speak? Did they speak partially? Okay, okay. I am able to speak. Oh, okay. They did not speak like that. Clearly, clear cut, you see, the speech was very clear. That is. The way Jesus healed. You can read that one in Mark 7, chapter 32 to 35. You can uh, note it down. You see, and uh, what happened? He touched his tongue, tongue and looking into heaven, he signed and said unto him, Epapta, that is, be opened. And straight away his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spoke plain, underlined, dear brethren. He spoke very clearly, it seems. He did not speak like a small child, partially. Okay, no. He spoke very clearly. Everybody was shocked whether he was dumb or not. In such a way, he spoke to your brain, you see. But today, you see, lot of miracles happen. But does it happen like this one? You see, does it 100% cure is there? No. You see, there will be improvement, light improvement, but not 100%. You see, cure. No 100% remedy. Moreover, you see, 
Uh, the crowd will be so much. That will be thousands, thousands, lakhs of people will be gathering there. But uh, uh, will all be yield? Uh, no, not all will be yield. No, only a few people will be yield. Uh, you see, isn't it? Oh, not all the people will be yield. When we ask why not all the people are yield, what is the reply they give? They tell, no, they don't have faith. That is the reason they are not healed. Only those who have faith, only those will be healed. Now, Jesus, did he heal only those who had faith on him? You see? No. Once, there was a man, you see, his child was a uh, uh, demon possessed. And he came to Jesus, uh, Lord, have mercy on my son, please. What did Jesus say? If you believe it will happen. The father could not believe it. But it is, he said, Lord, I want to believe it. But I am not able to do it, Lord. Now, what did Jesus say at that time? Did Jesus say, no, go. First, increase your faith. Next meeting you come. I will again come. Then we will heal you. No. Jesus, you see, to increase his faith, healed on the spot. Read Mark 9, chapter 23 and 24. Joel Badar, can you read Mark 9, chapter 23 and 24? Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believed. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. You see, help though my unbelief. The Jesus helped him. He never said, you come again next time. No, dear brother. That is the way. You see, why don't you pray for your faith? You see, you, you, you are you are a prophet, you know everything, no? So when you know that people, the people are coming, the, so many people don't have faith, why don't you give a speech to increase their faith? And uh, once their faith has increased, we can do the miracles, no? You see? And moreover, <clears throat> imagine to such a uh, big... Uh, a meeting, so much of gathering people, will they come without faith? Huh? Eh? They travel so many kilometers. Uh, they bring the ailing son, parents, children. Why? Faith. Uh, if I go, it will be healed. That is faith. What is Jesus? How much faith you should be having? It should be only like small, like a mustard seed. Not so very big like a mountain. But then this small faith, if you have... That is sufficient, dear brethren. But simply people will tell they don't have faith. Without faith, will they stay till night? Sitting on the ground without food. Eh? That is faith, dear brethren. And moreover, did uh, how many persons did Jesus heal? Eh? Jesus has had meetings, but how many people did Jesus heal? Let us see. What does the Bible say? Uh, <clears throat> Matthew 4, chapter. 23 to 24. Munna sister, can you read Matthew 4, chapter 23 to 24? And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Ah, underline. Healing all manner of uh, sickness. All manner of disease. Not some. Even cancer patient, if you go to Jesus, you will be healed. Even a deadly disease. You see, all diseases are healed. But today all things are healed. Huh? Where all things will be healed? Huh? Mm -hmm. Only 10% will be healed. That too, partially, not 100%. Then, sister, continue. Huh? And Jesus and his, and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with the diverse diseases and torment, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. See, they brought unto him all the sick. The entire sick people of the city were at the doorstep of Jesus, and Jesus healed everybody. Not only few, he did not call from the crowd, Oh, I know this person has come from very far, please come, God has called you. No, Jesus said, stand in the queue, everybody please come. You see? Read Matthew 8, 16. 
Matthew 8, 16. Uh, Romy sister or Amar brother? Can you read Matthew 8, 16? Okay, when the event was come, uh, they thought uh, unto him many that were passed with uh, devils, and he cast out the spirit with uh, his word and healed all the were sick. He healed all that were sick. You see, that is. The miracles that Jesus did. Everybody way healed your brethren. You see, let us read Mark first chapter 32 to 34. So Jesus he spent the entire night uh, healing everybody. Mark first chapter 32 to 34. Uh, Rosie's sister, can you read? <clears throat> okay, brother. And at even when the sun did set, they brought up to him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils, and all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of diverse disease, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. You see, entire city, he healed everybody. Therefore, the miracles of Jesus were there. You see, but today, there are a lot of big, big meetings happening, but only lots of people come, lot of offerings are collected, but uh, it is called as fasting and prayer. You see, nobody gives food for the poor. You see, they would have traveled so much of uh, distance uh, with hunger. They would be waiting to seek the blessings of the Lord. You see, they would tell that simply it is fasting and prayer. But what did Jesus do? Jesus also organized meetings, but it was feasting and prayer. You fed the 4,000 people, you fed the 5,000 people. That is the difference between Jesus' uh, you see, uh, meetings and other meetings. Uh. So, there's a lot of difference here, brethren, from the miracles which uh, happened uh, during, uh, you see, the days of Jesus and what miracles are happening uh, today. So, if he, many people uh, tell that uh, no brother, Jesus said uh, that uh, those who believe on me will do greater miracles than me. Let us read John 14, 12. John 14, chapter 12, verse. Uh, Kamal Burda, are you there? Kamal Burda? Okay. Uh, Romy sister, can you read John 14, 12? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the words, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my fathers. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, he that believes on me shall do greater works than me. Now, which is the greatest miracle that Jesus ever did? Uh, you see, if you say it is raising of the dead, Jesus raised three persons back to life Lazarus, you see, and uh, uh, a widow's son, you see, and uh, one more uh, girl. So, three miracles what Jesus did about raising from the dead that is the greatest of all the miracles. Now, you can tell me, can somebody do? Any greater miracle than what Jesus did, than raising somebody from the dead? You see, yes, there is one miracle that uh, Jesus did not do. And that is the greatest miracle which Jesus has told all the disciples to do. You know, which is that one? So Jesus healed uh, everybody. Jesus gave eyes to the blind, you see, ears to the deaf, you see, and the mouth to the dumb. You see, and a life to the dead. But Je did Jesus ever open somebody's eyes of understanding? Did Jesus ever open somebody's ears of understanding? No. No. Jesus said, he that has ears, let him hear. He that has eyes, let him see. 
Jesus never opened anybody's eyes or ears of understanding spiritually so they may understand the you see word of god and this is the greatest miracle which jesus did not do during his days but he has appointed his disciples to do it therefore he said go and preach to the ends of the world you see and make disciples not convert make disciples of jesus you see dear brethren this is the greatest miracle which our disciples has to do let us read you see ephesians 1:18 So Jesus never opened somebody's eyes of understanding, but the apostles did. Ephesians one eighteen, Ephesians one eighteen. Muna sister, can you read? The eyes of your understanding been enlightened, enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints ah the eyes of your understanding being enlightened you see did jesus say anything anybody says of understanding no everybody were blinded jesus clearly said you are of your father the devil aha uh -huh. how many pieces of persons years were opened when jesus spoke jesus said blessed are your eyes but they see for your eyes they hear but unto them it is not given so this miracle with what jesus did you see was appointed to the disciples read romans 811 romans 811 bro sister can you read romans 811 <clears throat> okay brother but if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you you see ah jesus raised the literal dead back to life but here more than that one it is rising spiritually back to life the whole world is dead to in the sight of god but after accepting christ walking in his path and trying to live day to day life in his path this is the greatest miracle that is appointed to the disciples to do this miracle has to be done how many people do this miracle you tell me you see bring them from false to the truth and tell them to walk and guide them and motivate them and encourage them to walk and be like christ what did the apostle paul say i labor you see in such a way as a woman traveled in pain so that christ may be formed in you that was the pain and the, you see and the burden which apostle paul had this is the miracle read matthew 2618 matthew 2618 rome sister can you read matthew 2618 Okay, uh, Joel brother, can you read Matthew twenty six eighteen? Matthew or Acts brother? Oh, sorry, Acts twenty six eighteen. Please forgive. Okay, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are. Sanct sanctified by faith that is in me see clearly it says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from power of satan unto god this is the miracle which is given to the disciples to do the brother this has to be done you see and uh, huh? let us see the life of jesus see jesus was the one who did miracles for the entire city everybody he healed you see god heard his prayer every time but what did he pray in garden of gethsemane father if it be thy will you see let this cup pass away from me yet not my will but let uh, thine will be done read matthew 2639 uh, muna sister can you read matthew 2639 and he went a little far, 
father and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Hmm. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Did Jesus pray selfishly for himself? Ever did he pray? Lord, you see, and uh, what did Apostle uh, Paul do? Apostle Paul was so powerful, he was so filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, that uh, if his handkerchief uh, was placed uh, on a sick person, he would be totally healed. It's going in uh, Acts 19, chapter 11 to 12. He has so much of power in his kerchief, in his clothes. Can you imagine, Apostle Paul, how great he should be? Let us read uh, Acts 19, chapter 11 and 12. Uh, Romy sister, you're there? Or Amar brother, you're there? Acts 19, 11 and 12, can you read? Okay, Gopal brother, can you read? Acts 19 verse 11, 11 and 12. 12. Mm. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. You see? So everybody was healed. Evil spirits went out from great miracles God did through Apostle Paul. Then Apostle Paul, how much powerful he should be? Then he should be having no disease at all now. But read what Apostle Paul says about himself. 2 Corinthians 12 chapter 7 to 10. Uh, Joel brother, can you read? 2 Corinthians 12 chapter 7 to 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of, of the re re revelations, there was given uh, to me a throne in, a, in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. See? Least. What was there, it seems, sir? There was a thorn in his flesh, the messenger of Satan in his flesh. To buffet him, it seems. The man was so powerful who could heal everybody of all the disease. But he himself had a thorn. That was the Satan in his flesh, it seems. To buffet him, to provoke him. Next, continue with her. Least I should be exalted above measure for these things I bought the Lord thrice that I might uh, depart from me and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee she? Uh, continue for my strength is made perfect perfect in weakness uh. most gladly therefore will I rather glorify in my inf infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me she? therefore what does he say Apostle Paul Pray to the Lord so that God may take away this uh, infirmity, this thorn from his flesh. How many times? Uh, three times it seems. Uh, you see? And three times he did not receive reply at all, it seems. That means his prayer was not answered. Uh, you see? But what was the reply that came from God? Uh, he said, in your weakness, uh, you see, my strength is made perfect. Uh, my grace is sufficient for you. In your uh, Weakness, my strength is made perfect. That was the reply from God. Abraham. They did not, uh, you see, uh, uh, you see, they did not shout and cry to the Lord for healings and miracles. Abraham. If it was God's will, definitely God would protect them. See the sufferings of Apostle Paul. What did he say in the last? Uh, I rather rejoice in the infirmities and sufferings that the grace of God may rest upon me, it seems. Uh, that was the reaction of Apostle. That is the same reaction should each and every Christian should have today. Not immediately go to the Lord and cry, Oh Lord, please help me. Lord would definitely help us. Uh, he would never leave us. Uh, see the experiences of Apostle Paul. 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 24 to 25. Munna sister, can you read? 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 24 to 25.
of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Ah, one minute. One, one by one we'll see. See, five times he was beaten, 40 stripes, one less is himself. 39 stripes he was beaten. How many times? Five times by Jewish people. Then next, sir. Huh? See, uh, thrice was I beaten with road. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered sleep break. Hmm? A night and a day I have been in the deep. Ah, see? Three times they were beaten him with a rod, it seems, sir. If you go to the police station, how they will eat you? Huh? Have you anybody experienced a police latte? Huh? If you take one latte, means that's all. Your bones will broke inside. Three times he was beaten with rod. And once he was beaten with the stone such a way that uh, the person thought that he's dead and left him. You see? But uh, Apostle Paul came and did the Lord's work. Uh, you see, and uh, the ship uh, in which he was going, it was shipwrecked. How many times, sir? Three times, uh, dear brethren. Imagine if we have the same experience in our life, will we still believe in Jesus, sir? If the government people, if the police people will come to our house and if they hit us three times, what will we do? Fourth time, we won't turn this side at all. We will just walk away. We'll pretend as if we don't know any brothers and sisters. We're not even Christian at all. Aha. Uh -huh. But Apostle Paul, you see, how many times he was beaten. Everybody stoned him, thought that he was dead. The ship he was growing, going, what happened? It was a shipwreck, how many times? Three times, sir. Imagine if you're going for a Lord's work, something happened, means what will think? Oh, it is a bad woman. Oh, God is guiding us not to go. We will immediately return. Apostle Paul was not like that. Shipwrecked. And he spent a a day and the night in the midst of the sea, since read, sister, read that verse again. A day and night, huh? I spent in the deep. Read that verse again. Thrice was I beaten with the roads, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered sea break, or night and a day I have been in the deep. Really? Night and day I have been in the deep. Have you gone to the beach? Huh? Does Nepal have any beach? Huh? Seashore is there in Nepal? No. No. So you never experience beach. They come to India. Lot of beaches are there. You know how the waves will come? Vroom, rushing. As the sun keeps on setting, the waves increase. You see, the police won't allow you to stay in the beach at all. Imagine... To stay in the beach itself is not so easy. You see, to the gushing sound itself, your heart will start beating very rapidly. But Apostle Paul spent a day and night where? Not on the seashore, on the sea. His ship was wrecked. Imagine, dear brethren, the condition of the sea, how tumultuous it will be. The entire ship is wrecked. But still, is there living in the middle of the sea, a day and night. What Apostle Paul would have cried? The Lord would have cried, uh, beating his heart, always shouting, jumping, crying. That was the faith, dear brethren. This is how God's children should be. So many faithful Christians were killed and slaughtered in various ways. They were crucified upside down. They were chopped off. Their heads were beheaded. They were thrown to live animals. You see, wild animals. Their children were smashed in before in front of their eyes. They were burnt as stake. Dear brethren. Many of the Christians sang wonderful songs during those times. Dear brethren, in all these things, they surrendered themselves to the Lord's will. You see, and how... Huh? In all these things, none of them prayed a selfish prayer only for them, seeking for blessings, miracles, money, wealth. You see, what did Jesus say? Don't worry about all these things. Sir. What you should eat, what you should drink, don't think much about it. All those things, your father knows that you should be having all those things. He will definitely give you. What did Jesus say? First seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
everything shall be given unto you so this is the first thing god's children should be there matthew 6 matthew 6 sister uh, roshni sister can you read matthew 6 chapter verse 31 to 33 roshni sister matthew 6 chapter 31 to 33 can you read Matthew 6 chapter verses 31 okay. to 33. <clears throat> okay, brother. Therefore, take no thoughts, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Hmm. This, For... is the, this is the worldly thought now. This is what we think now every day. So what we shall eat, what will happen to our future, what we will wear, where shall we eat, where shall we stay, which shall be our house. Huh? This is everybody's tension in this world. What is Jesus' reply? Huh? 32. For all, for after all these things to do, the, uh, the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have uh, need of all these things. See, all these things are sought by whom? Gentiles, unbelievers, uh, it's the worldly people. After becoming Christian, if you seek the same thing, then what is the difference between us and unbelievers? No difference at all. Everything is the same. What did Jesus say? God knows uh, that you are in need of all these things. Uh, so your needs should be definitely be fulfilled by God. He is our father. Imagine uh, if a child is there in your house, you see, uh, Lulia is there. Imagine if Lulia grows, uh, uh, comes to the age of six years, uh, she'll start going to school. Then uh, she'll be keep on worrying. Oh, tomorrow I should pay electricity bill. Oh, day after tomorrow I should pay rent. Oh, then I should pay school fees, van fees, take uniform. She'll be worried about all these things. She won't worry at all. Joyfully she will go to school, enjoy, and come to the home. She won't worry about all these things. Why? Because she has faith that her father, her mother knows the, that uh, she has need of all these things. So they will take care. So it is a responsibility. Just simply go and study and come. This should be our faith also. Our father who is the creator of this world. You see, each and every star, each and every thing belongs to him. He is the emperor. He is the owner of all these things. If he wants us to give anything, he can give like this. Sir. But he will give us only that which is necessary. Imagine, Lulia, can, our parents can give everything. But will they give? What is necessary? Only those things will be given to them. But uh, they won't be having any deficiency. You see? They won't be having any wants. Their wants will be fulfilled as per the needs by their parents. Similarly, it is with us. Continue, sir. Verse 33. What did Jesus say? Huh? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay. Our duty is to seek the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness. If we follow these things automatically, no need to ask our God at all. Definitely, what you want to eat? What you want to wear? You see, where do you want to stay? Everything, your job, give everything. All your requirements, basic requirements, uh, how we want to live in this world, everything God will take care. No doubt about it at all. You see, and uh, when, we, uh, when we fall into temptation, we should think, uh, God would never allow us to be tempted beyond our limit. Uh, as we are facing the temptation, He will definitely open us a way to escape from it. Uh, read 1 Corinthians 10.13. Gopal brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 10.13? There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Uh, you see, he is not unfaithful to just pressure us with temptation which we can't bear. He is faithful. He will not suffer us to be tempted above what we are able to bear. But as the temptations come, he opens the ways. Tells us, no, go. Go, this is the way. You see, that is God's guidance. That is God's help. What did Jesus say? You see, 
see the sparrows of the air they don't sow they don't reap you see but yet uh, god gives them the food at the right time are you not much worthy than the sparrows definitely dear brethren we are much more worthy than the sparrows uh, god will definitely help us uh, that faith uh, god's children should have uh romi sister read matthew 626 uh okay register okay <clears throat> hmm behold of follows of the air for the for the so not neither do they reap nor gather into uh barns it your heaven uh, heaven the father feed feed them um are they not much better than they okay. are we not much better than they what did jesus say even the very hairs of a head are numbered see read matthew 1030 amar brother read this one also matthew 1030 matthew 1030 okay but the very hairs of your head are all numbers okay even our hairs are numbered daily we comb how much hair falls no do we really worry that our hairs are falling no but yet jesus monitors all these things means even small things which we don't care which we don't worry our god cares about it he is monitoring each and everything so we should have faith on god that's the reason in hebrews 13:5 it says hey, let your speech be without covetousness you should always trying to squeeze 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 get you see Have faith on the Lord. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Jesus has told, no, I will never leave you. You see, I will be with you till the end of the world. Read. Ashish, brother, read. Hebrews 13.5, brother. Let your conversion be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he had never said, for he had said, sorry, I will never leave thee not forsake thee okay for so he said i will never leave thee not forsake thee have faith on the lord you see huh? therefore dear brother see the life of jesus huh? how much things he suffered you see how did he become perfect it is through suffering only then if jesus only had sufferings if he must have had sufferings if sufferings was required in his life what about us Uh, our suffering is not required in our life it is required it is a very must condition read hebrews 2:10 uh hebrews 2:10 joel brother can you read hebrews 2:10 for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings perfect through suffering jesus was made perfect through sufferings if he was made perfect only through sufferings then what about us dear brethren you see we can't go to heaven on the bed of roses sufferings is a must for god's children but in that one we need to have faith that lord will definitely help us no need to worry at all what did apostle paul say If you live godly in Christ, you shall suffer persecution. If there are no persecutions in your life, then it, we need to put a big question mark saying, "I am a God's children." You see, sufferings on a part of a Christian is a sign that we are God's children. So this is about miracles. Next, prophecy. Prophecy means what? You see, huh? telling about our future. Oh, you are there. tomorrow such and such thing will happen in your life future you will be like this one all these things no huh 
You see, many people think that uh, this is prophecy. Dear brother, if this is the prophecy, then what is the difference between uh, the roadside uh, people, the other religion people who tell prophecy about uh, future tomorrow? Yeah? Future forecast, astrology, astronomy. What is the difference between them and uh, this prophecy? Only the words change, but everything is the same now. Huh? Read the so many prophecies are there in the Bible. Did any of the prophet tell any particular thing about any individual? See in the Bible, everybody have prophesied about a nation, about a group, not about any individuals. They are only about Jesus is mentioned. You see, but you know, today everybody are behind this future forecast. You see, what did God say? He clearly condemned. Uh, listening to the forecast and the future, you see, God did not allow the people of Israel to do this one. Instead of uh, knowing uh, these prophecies about our life, we should study so many prophecies in the Bible. Jeremiah prophecy is there, Isaiah is there, Ezekiel is there, Revelation is there. Full book of prophets only. Huh? When do we go learn all these things? Uh? Moreover, what does the Bible say about a true prophecy? You see, the true prophecy is Telling about Jesus, not telling about our own self. Let us read uh, Revelation 19.10. Revelation 19.10. Uh, Roshni sister, can you read Revelation 19.10? And I fell <clears throat> and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See though, <clears throat> see though do it, not I am the, <clears throat> the fellow servant and of the brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Ah, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see? What is spirit of prophecy? Testimony about Jesus, not testimony about self. You see, telling about Jesus, you know what is it? Actually, telling about the kingdom. You see, telling about the kingdom. God has made a beautiful plan. He has told a prophecy of all human beings. Not for one day, not for one month or one year. He has told a prophecy for a thousand years. Where is that prophecy spoken in any of the churches? None of these things are spoken at all. And moreover, even if they tell prophecy also, nothing is fulfilled these days. Only whatever they tell, only 20%, 30% is fulfilled. You see, so those are not the prophecies which are related in the Bible. Next, visions. You see, visions, dreams. Everybody thinks that God is speaking through us, visions, dreams and all. Huh? Why? Because they tell uh, in Joel, the verse is given. When the Holy Spirit is poured, they will, uh, you see, uh, see visions. They will see dreams. So let us read that verse also. Joel, 2nd chapter 28-29. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Joel, 2nd chapter 28-29? and 29? And it shall come to pass of the word that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. So everybody based on this verse it tells. Uh, once the Holy Spirit comes they will see dreams, prophecy, visions and all. But read the verse carefully. First uh, in verse 28, it says, It shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that is the time when the spirit is poured upon all flesh that everybody will prophesy, dream and see vision. And it says, And also upon the servants and handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Now just observe this verse. In verse 28, it says, I will pour out my spirit upon all. But verse 29, it says, I will pour out my spirit upon the handmaidens and uh, servants. If the Holy Spirit is poured upon everybody, then why I can pour on servants and handmaids? Actually, this verse is upside down. That means, now in the gospel age, God is giving his Holy Spirit, 
pouring of the Holy Spirit only upon his servants, the church class, not upon everybody, but in the kingdom. When everybody will come to the knowledge of Christ, then the Holy Spirit will be poured upon everybody. Then they will see and understand the visions and the prophecies in the Bible. Now, is this application of the verse upside down correct? Yes, this is correct. Because we have a proof for it in the Old Testament. See, in the book of Judges, 6th chapter, 37 to 40, Gideon asked for a sign from the Lord. The Lord tells, okay, you ask whatever you want. He tells, Lord, I will keep wool huh? uh, in the night. So morning, only that wool has to be covered with dew. God says, okay, your wish is granted. So he sleeps and wakes up in the morning and sees that his uh, wool is completely covered with dew. Then Gideon asks, Lord, I will ask one more request. Please don't feel bad. Tell, okay, you tell me what you want to do. Lord, tomorrow, I will keep the same you see, wool. But uh, today, the wool should be dry, but all the land should be totally wet with dew. The same thing happens. This is a sign of the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, dew means Holy Spirit. Psalm 733.3. Okay? So, snow, dew, all these things represent the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is given only on the wool. The servant class, the church class. But in the kingdom, when the church won't be there, you see, only the ground will be there. The ground, the people, the world, they will be anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us read this verse in Judges 6, chapter 37 to 40. Joel, brother, can you read Judges 6, chapter 37 to 40? Okay, brother. Thirty-seven to forty. Yeah. Okay. Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the if if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, and it was so. For each rose up early on the morrow mm. and thrust the fleece together and wring the dew out of the fleece a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger he hot against me, and I, I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece let it now be dry only upon the fleece and upon upon all the ground let there be dew uh, and god did uh god did so that night for it was dry upon the fleece only and there was dew on the ground all the ground all the ground so this is the sign of anointing of God's Holy Spirit. Now it is given only to the church. In the thousand years, it will be given to the whole world. Then, whatever is written in the Bible, they will see literally in front of their eyes as visions and dreams being fulfilled. Hence, dear brethren, all the miracles, all the prophecies, all the visions and dreams and all the tongues and miracles, what is happening today? It is completely the counterfeit work of the devil because he knows that we are living in the very last days and Jesus is coming and to destroy his kingdom, to establish his kingdom. And in this time, the Bible says that Satan will do duplicate miracles. Read Matthew 12.26. Matthew 12.26. Uh, Roshni sister, can you read Matthew 12.26? Matthew 12.26. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? See, if Satan is dividing against, uh, uh, if Satan is casting out Satan, 
then it is a clear sign that his kingdom is divided. Uh, then his kingdom is not standing. We are living in a days where Jesus is establishing his kingdom on this earth by smiting all his worldly empires. About this we will read very clearly in the coming classes. So this is a clear sign that it is a Satan who is doing all these miracles. Apostle Paul also clearly warns that in the last days, you see, these counterfeit miracles will be done by the devil to deceive God's children. Let us read 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter 8 to 12. Uh, Muna sister, can you read 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, verses 8 to 12? And then shall that the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Ah, see, all power. observe it clearly. Concentrate everybody. See, whose coming, Jesus' coming, is when? After the working of Satan, with all power. Ah, continue, sir. And sign and a lying wonders. See, signs and, with, and lying wonders. Ah. And with all deceivableness deceive of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for and for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Mm -hmm. that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Ah, see, it is Satan who is doing it with all power, signs and lying wonders, sir. with all deceivableness and unrighteousness. To whom? To whom does it happen? It happens to the people who don't love the truth, who don't want to they say, listen more about God's world. Only to them all these things will happen. You see, somebody coming and speaking. You see, seeing visions. You see, dreams. This will happen only to the devil's children. Not God's children at all. The clearly given who are there. These are the people who don't have heart to listen God's words. Who don't want the truth. Who want to believe the lie. If you want to believe the lie, God permits them to believe a lie. This or this. But then, so now what all things are happening, we should be very careful. You see, what did Jesus say? You see, what's the work of the Holy Spirit? John 16, 13, brother. Amar brother or uh, Romy sister, can you read John 16, 13? What is the work of the Holy Spirit? First work of the Holy Spirit. How be it when he the when uh, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Ah, so see, is... this is the first work of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, it will guide you into, into all truth. Not that it will grow miracles, you see, healings. No, no wonder, sir. It will guide you into all truth. Is these <laughs> things are there? Those who believe that who claim that all these things, miracles are done by God. Ah, is the truth is there with them. Do they believe that the soul die? Do they believe that the hell is a place of, uh, you see, a grave? No. Do they believe that uh, God is only one? No. You see, so many false doctrines are there. But these things have to be carefully understood. Uh, they are conducting the Lord's memorial daily, weekly, monthly. Is this God's villa? That's God's holy spirit. Uh, you see? So therefore, uh, the Bible clearly says, those who don't uh, Follow as per the Bible, it is a clear sign that there is no Holy Spirit in them at all. Isaiah 8.20 Isaiah 8.20 uh, Gopal brother, can you read? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Uh, if they don't speak according to the Bible, it means that there is no Holy Spirit in them at all. So, we should be very careful. So, last one point is there. We will uh, read it and finish it off. Where, where is that given? It is given in Mark 16, chapter 15 to 18. Joel Buddha, can you read? Mark 16, chapter verses 15 to 18. Slowly, one by one, we'll see and go. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, 
go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he had believed uh, and his baptized shall be saved but he that believe believeth not shall be damned and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take of serpents and if they drink drink any deadly things it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover ah uh, see if they drink deadly thing nothing will happen you see ha uh, if they take serpents nothing will happen to them you see ha uh, nothing will hurt them it seems ha uh, uh, If they lay their hands on the sick, immediately it will be healed. It seems okay, pa. Let us take this thing like that only. Okay. Now you are all Christians, na? No? Everybody. Ashish brother, Gopal brother, Joel, Munna sister, Romi sister, Amar brother, Roshni, Kamal. Everybody are Christians, na? No? Yes or no? Yes, brother. Yes. Well, yes, brother. Oh, only yes. four. Okay. Rest of them are Christians. Okay. No problem. Okay. Now today we'll prove. We'll test and see whether you are Christians or not. What you do? You take one poison, drink it. Okay, brother, drink it and see what will happen. Let us see. If you are a Christian, you will you will be saved. You won't die. Nothing will happen. That's what the Bible says. Okay, but if you die, it is a clear proof that you don't have Holy Spirit. You are not a Christian. Shall we do the test? Yes, Nobody wants to reply. Yeah. Shall we do this test or not? Okay. Is it correct to do this test? Tell me. Is it correct to test the Lord? No, brother. No. <laughs> Jesus never tested God. This is the temptation. Exactly what the devil gave to Jesus. What did he say? You fall from the temple. Angels will come and hold you. Then everybody will see that you are God's child, and everybody will believe you. Did Jesus said, "Jump from the temple"? What did he say? You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Matthew four seven. Ashish, please read. Okay, go, please, please read. Jesus said unto him, "It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God." Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Taking serpent or drinking poison, ah, it is faith on God. Ah, it is not faith. It is tempting God. It is testing God. If you tempt and test God, all these things won't happen. It won't be fulfilled. You see, hence this is not the scriptural meaning at all. And moreover, what does he say? If you lay your hand on the sick, then all diseases will be healed. Then why Christians have built a hospital? You see, all the big, big hospitals are built by Christians only. Why did they build it? Instead of building hospitals, they can simply sit on the road near the hospital and tell everybody, "Come, come, come, come! I lay your hand, I lay my hand on you, you will be healed." You can do that. Why are they building hospitals? See, in the world, whole world, majority of the great hospitals are Christians only. Huh? Eh? Dear brethren, this is unscriptural. If you read in the Bible, Mark sixteen chapter verses nine to twenty, actually it is not there in the original Bible at all. Is there any footnote given, brother? Gopal, brother, any footnote is given in your Nepali Bible? Wait, brother, let me check. Is it given? Uh, uh, no, no, brother. Okay, in NIV it is there. I given the book NIV, no, brother. See, it is oh, there. Yes, brother. Read it and put it in a group. Okay. Okay, brother. This scripture, Mark sixteen, chapter nine to twenty, is not in the original Bible at all. It is an added verse. Hence, dear brethren, the only sign which God has given us, and it, Jesus Himself said, it will be the sign of Jonah. You see, our faith. Should be on the word of God, then all these uh, outward demonstrations. You see why? Because scriptures is sufficient for us. 
to make a calling election sure. Last, this verse we'll read. Uh, Roshni sister, please read 2 Timothy 3rd chapter 16 and 17. Second Timothy, third chapter, sixteen and seventeen. All the scripture is given by inspiration of God and is the profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in right in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly. Uh, furnish up to all go good words. See, that the man of God. The word of God is given. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. If you want to become perfect, only Bible is sufficient. Thoroughly furnish unto all good words. Definitely, dear brethren. So, it is our faith on the Lord, you see, and trust on the Lord that he will definitely do us good. Okay? So, please uh, read the notes. Uh, I will be sending the YouTube link also. Any doubts, any questions anybody is having, you can ask.